I was living in Hawaii and I was going through surgeries and I finally got amputated at age eight. And that's when I kind of started playing volleyball. My sister had played standing volleyball and I kind of followed along and started playing. Um, it wasn't until I moved to North Carolina that I was playing in a standing volleyball tournament with my club team and Dixie Collins, actually the men's assistant at the time, was my referee of the game. And I was the captain and we went up and did the captain thing and she was like, oh, by the way, I'm the men's assistant coach for sitting volleyball. And I was like, I'm okay, we're good. Um, and then she proceeded to go and talk to my parents and told them what it was about. And then I was in Colorado the next month for a training camp to go and try out the sport. And once I sat down, I didn't leave, you know, I was hooked on it. So I started when I was 13 with the team. So I've kind of really grown up with this team and gone through a lot of life with them. <laughs> going into it, you have no idea what you're doing. I mean, I knew volleyball because I had been playing standing volleyball, but you sit down and the whole game is just a whole different creature. I sat the bench for a good hot minute and was happy with it. I gave water bottles out. I cheered. Um, I remember going in for one point at a whole tournament and being so excited for the one point and then, you know, just living my life on the bench and tried to support. So in that sense, it really kind of helped me be a good athlete, I think, because I've seen the side of being on the bench and really just treasuring the moments that you get to spend on the court and realizing that it's an honor to be a on this team and then B actually get to go out and play and be a contributing part and being a person that gets to play on a consistent basis and so I've been very lucky to kind of mature into that role of playing because sitting on the bench is not fun. <laughs> Going into Rio, I wanted to win so bad. I was we've lost to China twice and for me I just I I knew that we were better and I knew that we could and I think that our worst enemy was ourselves. Going into the gold, we knew what we had to do. We knew who we were playing. We knew what was what they were gonna do to us. And mind you, we had lost to China in the pool play. We had lost to them already. And going into that match, we just, we were like, we know what we gotta do. It was just, it was a calm confidence is what I considered it, but it was just, it was insane and it was amazing and I hope that I have that feeling again, but it, having lost and gotten silver both times, getting that gold, you're finally like, I did it, I finally, finally got over that hump, I finally did it. And so it's just, it's one of those moments that will live with me forever. I've wanted to win gold since I was 13 and it's once in a lifetime type of experience. And a lot of what I had to think about after Rio was how much energy am I putting in and is it worth it? I took some time off and I talked to Bill and was like, I just need to take a break. And the more breaks I took, the more I missed it. When you kind of take a step away, it's just kind of that gut, heart, this is my life. Like I can't step away, not when I'm still able to play and not when I can still do this. Taking the break, I really realized how much I just love the sport and love being on a team. I can't give that up. I can't walk away from the sport. I can't walk away from my team. Winning gold and hearing your national anthem, it's just, it just is amazing. You can't even put into words how much it just, I mean, it hits you and you're just like, holy cow, it's just amazing. So Tokyo, I'm excited for. I'm excited that I get to represent the team again, represent USA, and hopefully just take it to some countries and show them who's boss. <laughs> USA Volleyball, the path to the podium.